Hey, Tom Matson here with a lesson on how I turned 21 million in IPO into 10 million in debt in six easy months. Yes, indeed, probably one of my most expensive business lessons I've ever learned. And I wanted to talk to you about uh, what that is and uh, equally important, how you can avoid some similar sorts of tragic errors in your life. Uh, but first, let me take you back to the fascinating and exciting day where this all began. Celebrating 10 years of outstanding business news coverage. And at the TSX, we have Tom Matson. He's president and CEO of Aegis Investment Management. They're kicking things off down there. That company focuses on developing a marketing golf-related franchises. Trading is underway. There you go. That was me uh, a few years ago, live ringing the bell at the Toronto Stock Exchange. One of the highlights of my business career and the culmination of seven and a half years of effort by me and a whole team of people, many of which you saw wearing those fancy golf sweaters in the background. And just, oh, and by the way, a few months later, my personal stock in that company was worth $21 million one morning when I checked the paper. Now, if you've ever taken a company public or you know anything about that, you know that the founder's shares are held for several years. And in fact, uh, the CEO, which I was at that time, uh, it's a three-year phase in. So it was a paper, a paper win of $21 million. But nonetheless, we were off to a good start. And less than six months later, I turned that 21 million IPO into 10 million in debt. And it was quite the story and one of the most important business lessons that I've ever learned. And I want to share some of it with you now so that you can hopefully avoid the same problems that happened to me and our team. You see, we were, we were very strategic, we thought, as we were taking the company public, we knew that I had no public company experience, number one. And number two, that the market, the public market, was filled full of sharks not dolphins. Uh, this model of life comes from a book called the, uh, A Strategy of a Dolphin by Dudley Lynch and Paul Cordes. And it's a model that we'd used in our business very successfully to build these golf training center franchises that we had been growing and expanding. And now we are taking public on the Toronto Stock Exchange and plan to take it across the globe. So we knew that the CEO position in a publicly traded company needed to have a shark involved if we were going to handle against all the other sharks in the public marketplace, let alone all the people who short your stock and try and force it down when you're a new company and all the other game playing that can go on with the new organization. So we were really committed to finding a way to solve this. We hired a, a CEO recruiting company. They found us some 600 candidates, narrowed it down to the top 12 superstars. From that, we at the board level vetted each of the 12, came up with our top two, which were vastly overqualified, incredibly amazing people, both with public company experience. And we picked one whose name shall remain nameless, as you'll find out why shortly. <laughs> and uh, just a few months later, he took $50,000 from the working capital of the business after I had stepped down as CEO and disappeared, moved back to Minnesota, and the business was very shortly unable to file our quarterly updates on a public exchange. And when you do that, the exchange freezes your stock right away because it's a sign of trouble. When your stock is frozen as a new publicly traded entity, good luck raising capital because now the exchange has basically said, oh, yeah, these guys are in trouble. They're not going to make it. And this happened just after the massive collapse in the economy in 2007, 2008. So already the markets were super jittery. And frankly, we never recovered. And it wasn't until months later that I found out the story because I had stepped down as CEO and the new CEO had convinced all of the senior team not to communicate with me because I was the former CEO and they should focus and talk to him. What they didn't know was that this was a plan all along for him to drain the money out of the till, then take a, a new position. He brought in a venture capital fund and they bought a very large chain, a uh, restaurant chain with the venture capital fund, which he ran for a few years, ran it in the ground. That, that venture capital chain lost hundreds of millions of dollars. 
he then put another group together and bought what was left of the company for 10 cents on the dollar. And so this particular gentleman, that was his modus operandi. That's what he did. He basically took advantage of things and he was a shark in the true sense of the word. In the book, The Strategy of a Dolphin, it talks about sharks, dolphins, and carp. Sharks are the kill or be killed type. Dolphins are the team players. It's about uh, togetherness and pod and family. And the carp are the ones getting eaten by the sharks. Every time you talk to them, you call them up and say, hey, how you doing? No, you got eaten by another shark again? Didn't you get eaten by one last week? You know who I'm talking about, right? You recognize the, the carp? Well, there's something in nature that I've learned, having once swum with the dolphins in the wild, and that is that it is the only creature the shark fears. Shark doesn't fear man. It doesn't know man. It sees us as a stranger or foreign or a Twinkie or something. It doesn't fear us whatsoever. But it does fear a dolphin. And the reason is that if a shark goes after a weak member of the pod because it thinks it's sick and it might be able to take advantage of it, the rest of the pod gangs up on the shark and beats it senseless until it can't swim anymore. It's a phenomenal lesson from Mother Nature. And it's part of the reason why the big lesson I learned out of this experience was we knew we were hiring a shark. We were absolutely positive we were hiring a shark. In fact, we wanted a shark. My uh, first wife at the time had said, you can't put a shark in. He's going to take advantage of you guys. He's going to rip you off. And we're like, no, 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 you don't understand, honey. We want the shark in. Like, that's what we want. We want a shark to take care of all the other dangers that are out there. Well, she was right. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, six years later, she became my ex-wife, what I now call my first wife, in part because of the money that we lost and the drama that it caused from us not listening, frankly, from me not listening to that situation. Because sharks will be sharks. It's their duty to be sharks. That's how they're bred. That's what they're all about. Their job is kill or be killed. So the big takeaway for me from this journey this massive journey from a publicly traded stock that was going to be worth hundreds of millions someday to a massive collapse. And the reason 10 million in debt was there is that I, I hated the ending so bad that I pledged to every single investor that had put money in before we went public and every single franchise owner that over life's journey, I would pay them back. And that's roughly $10 million. I'm still paying it back. And so it was from 21 million up to 10 million down. And what I learned out of that is if you're going to go into business, go into business with dolphins. Do not go into business with sharks. You can market with sharks. Some of the biggest people in the information marketing space are what I call enlightened sharks. It's still all about them, but they want to help you get what you want so they can get what they want. So they're great marketing partners or joint venture partners, but you don't want to go into business with them because their job is to take whatever they can get. And if you're a dolphin or you want to hang with dolphins, that's who you should be partnering with. So there was my uh, $31 million swing lesson, uh, an incredibly painful journey in my life. And uh, hopefully it'll be something you can take to heart. And when you do your next business or you evaluate your current business, make sure you're playing with the dolphins.